And the Philippines works to stay ahead of Omicron with the approval of a COVID treatment pill and giving the nod to vaccinating young children. For a closer look at the global fight against COVID-19, Dr. Bharat Pankanya, senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter, joins us live now for more. Dr. Pankanya, COVID-19 pills like Pfizer's Paxlovid approved in the United States and the Philippines. Are these drugs going to prove to be a game changer in the fight against coronavirus? We would all like it to be a game changer. I'm a little bit cautious about it. And if we look at the research, even the research title tells us a lot, which is uh, the research was the EPIC HR study, which is Evaluation of Protease Inhibitor for COVID High Risk Study. So they looked at these medications in a high risk population and found it to be effective. So we have we have a ray of hope, we have a ray of sunshine that in a specific select group of people, this pill, provided it is taken early in the course of the infection, appears to prevent serious illness and death. So that's the ray of hope, but we must be careful about not extending that to all the population. Oh, Dr. Pankanya, uh bring uh, essentially murk there have been problems. So France suddenly cancelling its order because the efficacy for reducing hospitalisation and death is in fact no more than 30%. So as you mentioned, these things, uh, trials will bring to light how effective they really are. But in the meantime, we've got vaccinations, uh, we've got uh, oral antivirals like these two drugs from Merck and Pfizer, we've got public health care guidelines, uh, we've got uh, health care systems that should stay robust. If you look at these various arms that we need to stay there so that we can help fight COVID-19, how far along are we in terms of all these different arms working together in our fight in this battle, long battle against COVID-19? That's a really lovely issue uh, in that uh, fighting COVID pandemic is a multifaceted approach. And if we take the multifaceted approach, which is vaccines, boosters, the medications that are coming on from Pfizer and Merck, as well as monoclonal antibodies, uh, as well as better treatment regimes. But the most important one also, which we tend to disregard, is ventilation, good quality masks, good quality masks worn properly. All those multifaceted layers, if we put it together, we will get on top of it. And one final bit, which we must not forget, is immunize the rest of the world. We are not well unless, everywhere, unless and until everyone else is also well. Well, Dr. Pankanya, more data is certainly filling in the blanks as far as what we know about Omicron. But latest studies are also pointing to the fact that Omicron may well be less severe. That's becoming uh, more uh, sort of clear uh, as, we, as we progress with this. But is it a silver lining? Could this variant uh, pave the way perhaps towards living with COVID-19? I would love to say that, yes, that is the direction of travel. However, just as out of the blue Omicron appeared, another version, another variant can also appear. And it will appear if we don't subdue and suppress infections in the rest of the world. So whilst Omicron at the moment appears to becoming the dominant strain, we do not know categorically that it is less disease causing. The early indicators are that it may be. In a few weeks time, we will know more. But the most important thing is, please, uh, the richer nations of the world, the Americans, the Europeans, need to help the poorer parts of the world to also get immunized simultaneously. That way we will be in a better place. Dr. Pakania, at this point that you raise, we are not safe until the whole world is safe. And we've been hearing that ad nauseum for more than a year now. Do you think we actually heeded that warning? And if we have not, two years down since we first identified uh, this uh, COVID-19 in Wuhan City in China, are we any closer to learning any lessons from what we have found out so far from managing COVID-19? 
It is so unfortunate because infection control is not super, super rocket science. And the World Health Organization and many of my colleagues and myself have been giving the same message over and over again, which is we need to simultaneously suppress infections across the globe because it's akin to a fire. If there is a fire raging in next door Malaysia to you in, and in, in Singapore, you build a big bank and you keep on protecting yourself, you will never succeed unless you also help the Malaysians put out their fires over there. And it's the same analogy here, which is you immunize your population. Of course you do, but you bring down infections in the rest of the world at the same time. Otherwise, variants arise and then they put you many steps back. We need better political leaders across the globe to enable this to happen. Uh, thanks so much for that, uh, Dr. Pankanya, Dr. Bharat Pankanya, Senior Clinical Lecturer at the University of Exeter.